My name is Manfred Helber and I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in the category Cloud and Data Center. In this video, we have a full live demo session with all the steps required for deploying a two-node Azure Stack HCI cluster. We will start in a Windows Admin Center. We configured Windows Admin Center in a previous module about installing and configuring Windows Admin Center. So actually, I have my gateway here in the list of the servers. And in clicking to add, I will be able to add servers, Windows PCs, server clusters, and Azure VMs. We will start with the server clusters here. So this is the step to create a new Azure Stack HCI based cluster based on physical or virtual machines. We can read here, we can create clusters running Windows Server OS o, or Azure Stack HCI OS. And I want to create a new one. I want to use this wizard to create a new Azure Stack HCI cluster. And I select for Azure Stack HCI OS and I have all servers in one side. Here, the second option is for stretch cluster across two sides where we need minimum two servers in each side. So minimum four servers in the cluster. Here we have two servers in our Azure Stack HCI two node cluster. So what I'm providing, what I'm showcasing to you is the smallest possible deployment with Azure Stack HCI. I want to create all servers in one side. We can see a great deployment wizard, a great deployment tool that starts with getting started with several steps here to prepare the environment. Then we have the networking. Then we have the clustering. We have the storage and optional, the software defined networking. This wizard is with exact this feature exclusive to Azure Stack HCI. We have seen there's also an um, Azure Stack HCI wizard part, sorry, a uh, deployment wizard part for traditional clusters based on Windows Server, but exact the steps we will see are only available in the combination Azure Stack HCI managed with Windows Admin Center. So in the first step, we will add servers. Let's add servers. It's the D101 minus ASHCI01. Sorry, this is my username. We add the servers in the bottom of the page. Here's my user. It's the MHDemoLab user um, domain the mhdemolab domain with the user administrator and a password I want to use. So it's an administrative account that's used to connect to the target servers. Here I specify the servers D101 minus ASHCI01. We have seen there was a message, couldn't find this server, but it's already started to search for this server when I was typing. So the D101 ASHCI01 should be found. Yes, the server is found in my environment. I will add the server and I will also add D101 minus AS for Azure Stack HCI02. Searching for the server, we will see when the server is found on the network and then we can add the server here to our configuration. Found the server, can add it. And we can see here's a validation. So we can see the name of the server, the status, the operating system is Azure Stack HCI and the model here you could read for example primeline system x um, so your hardware vendor's name and the system name i mentioned i will work with virtual machines and this is the reason why i can read here microsoft virtual machine join a domain i mentioned i already prepared this domain join to save time and this is exactly what Windows Admin Center says here, 
domain join the servers already belong to a domain. The next step is to install features on these machines because in our one of our previous modules I explained to you the stack of Azure Stack HCI in detail and here you can see yes Azure Stack HCI installs Hyper-V, it installs failover clustering. We don't have a feature called Storage Spaces Direct because Storage Spaces Direct is enabled. We see the data deed application and so on. I also could have prepared these steps, but my plan was to show you what you need, to show you that the installation is possible directly via the Windows Admin Center. For sure, I will fast forward this video a little bit because the installation will take some time. And usually we have a small issue here when we work with virtual machines. And because virtual machines are perfectly for you to test and showcase this configuration, I wanted that we see this error together to that I can show you how to fix it because it's only a small additional step. Let's install the features here. The installation starts, the data duplication is installed and the great thing is here, we have an installation on all of the nodes. So it's already a great time saving mechanisms in a two node cluster, but imagine you have four nodes or you have a stretch cluster with eight nodes. The features are installed of each of the nodes to save you time and to ensure that the configuration is identical. So now I will fast forward in the video. So I will skip the time we need to wait here for the installation and for the server restarts. If there is a restart requirement or required on the target servers, then the restart is also automatically done here. So I mentioned that usually we see an issue here when we deploy Azure Stack HCI cluster based on virtual machines. And this is exactly what I mentioned because it says here, okay, Hyper-V could not be installed because please ensure nested virtualization is enabled in order to successfully install Hyper-V on these machines. Yes, nested virtualization is required. Let's check if we have the nested virtualization enabled for our virtual machines. I will run a Windows PowerShell integ integrated script engine, run as administrator, the, so the PowerShell ISE. And I want to choose larger font size to ensure that you can follow these steps. And then we'll use a get minus VM processor. So I will use a get minus VM processor on the physical Hyper-V host where I'm running this Azure Stack HCI VMs. Get VM processor for the VM name and the name is the D101 minus ashci01. This is my virtual machine and I want to format this as a list because when I look at these extensions, I can see the expose virtualization extension, what's required for the nested virtualization is already true here. So this information in the wizard, in the deployment wizard, is not correct here with this nested virtualization. So how can I fix, fix this? I can use my Windows Admin Center and open a new tab and I can use Windows Admin Center to deploy this additional features on the Azure Stack HCI nodes. To be able to do this, I have to add the nodes to the list of my servers. So I click on add and I click on add servers. I don't have to interrupt the wizard because I can add or open additional tabs in the Windows Admin Center. Let's add the D101 minus 
Azure Stack HCI01 server. It's searching for the server and I need credentials for the authentication. Add with credentials. So when I add with credentials, I don't have to um, enter them always. I mentioned this only in the session and then I can use these credentials all the time in the session. Let's have a look at this machine and I can choose for the roles on this target server, roles and features. And I can install a role. You can select for Hyper-V here. Install Hyper-V. And select reboots the server automatically if required. If you use an Azure Stack HCI certified solution, this additional step is not required. This is actually, it's a something like a small bug in the deployment wizard. But if you know how to handle it, you can see you have the nested virtualization enabled. You can install the role on the target node. And for sure, we can do and we must do the same steps with the second server. So let's add the server here. It's the D101 minus Azure Stack HCI02. I will add this machine here. And now I have the stored credentials. I can use them here. I have them inside or within the session. Searching for this name. And now the server is added to the list here. I can switch to this server like I did it with, with the first one. I can select for the roles and features. And then I can select for Hyper-V install Hyper-V and reboot the server automatically if required. So it's only a small thing. The restart is done automatically. And if I expect that the restart is finished, the installation is finished, then I can switch back to my wizard and I can select refresh to refresh the list here, it's verified. You can see, ah, now Hyper-V is installed. Everything is green, everything is fine. Now we can go to the next step. So if you have some errors in this wizard, you don't have to leave the wizard and begin from the scratch. The wizard saves its configuration, so you can start from the scratch without entering all the data or also choosing different values, but you also can open additional tabs here in the Edge browser. Um, what I didn't mention, Chrome browser is also supported, but I prefer the Edge browser. So when I go to next, I have the installation of updates. For Azure Stack HCI, we usually will see some updates we can install here. I will not do this in this step because this is an optional thing. It would consume some time here and we want to save this time. And if I don't install the updates here, I can show you later in the Windows Admin Center how to deploy updates for an existing cluster. What's interesting, we can check here for the, for the updates what's available because here you always will see if there are feature updates available. In the next step, we will see hardware updates. I will not see any hardware updates because I'm using virtual machines for my demo deployment. In a physical environment, you will see hardware updates if you have an integrated system. Not for validated nodes. They usually you have to install them manually. For integrated systems, you will receive here hardware updates. You will not see any updates if you click on retry here. So when you know you have a validated node or you are using virtual machines, then the next step is to click on next. And before you do it, manually check if there are required hardware updates, maybe firmware or driver updates. 
The wizard realizes there are pending reboots on the servers, so I will restart the servers remotely. And this is the great thing about this uh, Windows Admin Center wizard here. I don't have to walk to the servers or connect via remote desktop and restart them. I can just click on restart. At the end of this line, I will see the status. Now they are restarting, then they are back. And when they are restarted, I will see they are finished. Then I can go to the next step, the network configuration. And the next part, the host network configuration is one of the most important steps here because you can have a lot of misconfiguration there. We will jump to this step in a few seconds. I skipped the waiting time for the restart of the servers and now we can see both servers are ready. All the servers are ready. When you are ready, then select next. And we are ready so we can go next to the next step. Now we have two configuration options for networking. Network ATC to deploy and manage networking. I asked Microsoft what network ATC stands for because my explanation was this is the networking advanced technical configuration but Microsoft said no network ATC is network AT ATC there so there's no um, yeah, wording behind this acronym. So, okay, it's network ATC. For me, it's an advanced technical configuration. We can create and deploy a single network configuration for all servers based on best practices. We can monitor and reapply networking settings that drift, and we can ensure that servers added to the cluster later receive the same settings. These are the advantages. The disadvantage is for our very small deployment with two servers, the network ATC is more complex. So network ATC is great if you have a larger deployment, when you add servers on a regular basis, because they receive the same settings, you have to don't have to configure, you mustn't configure each server um, individually. You have something like, let's say, network templates, network template settings. We will choose the manual configuration because actually the situation is that we have a lot of configuration options and we want to see them. And in our two node configuration, my opinion is that it's easier to manually configure this, but keep in mind, if you add a node, you have to manually configure this. If you add another node, you have to manually configure this and so on. No automatic configuration will happen later for the new servers. We have everything to do manually. So this is not the best step if I st start with two nodes and I want to add one node each week for the next three or four weeks, then I would prefer the network ATC. So next, networking. Great in the wizard is that we have always a validation. I have my two nodes and the deployment Azure Stack HCI cluster wizard is checking and validating my network adapters. Actually, they are not listed because they are validated or we have the validating process. We can see this here. Um, what we can see on the top of the page, we can refresh the list, then we have to wait again. If we have disabled interfaces, we can enable them. If we have interfaces we don't want to use, we can disable them and we can include and exclude interfaces. Maybe you have interfaces where you say, I don't want to disable them, I need these interfaces, but I don't want them to be part of the Azure Stack HCI deployment. So now the verification has been completed. And I again skipped some time here. So in a physical environment or also a virtual environment, you will need to wait a few minutes to receive the information. Here we can see I have several network connections here. In each server, four interfaces with 10 gigabits each interface. And all the interfaces are up and running. In the module about hardware requirements and networking requirements, we already discussed the requirements for the networking. 
for sure this interfaces should be redundant or we should build a redundancy with these interfaces. So typically, um, uh, physical server deployment has eight physical network interfaces or two powerful uh, physical network interfaces that are teamed and where we build the connectivity on the virtual layer. We will see this in the next steps of this wizard. So first, let's go to next and let's select the deployment topology for the management adapters. What's great, in the bottom of the list, you can see the adapters that are suitable for um, management. So these adapters can be used to reach the host operating system. Here we have the information, select Ethernet or Ethernet 4. To ensure connectivity during cluster creation, this is required to solve, resolve the server by DNS name. Now we can decide if we have one physical management adapter. This is the configuration I want to choose. And I get the information, the selected network adapters will be renamed as management for easy identification. I could also choose for teaming physical network adapters, the second option. Then I can choose two interfaces in the list at the bottom to have redundancy for the management interface. I will only use the single adapter here. You have seen the two choices. Let's apply and test this configuration. And what's great about this, it's always an apply and test. It applies the settings and it tests immediately if these settings work here in this configuration. So let's go to next. Now we have the configuration for the virtual switch. The virtual switch for our virtual machines. We can choose for create one virtual switch for compute and storage together. Then we will see the virtual machines on this switch with their communication and the host with the storage traffic. In one of our previous modules where we talked about hardware for Azure Stack HCI, we have learned how Azure Stack HCI and the technology storage spaces direct distributes the data across the server nodes. This extends that are distributed redundant across the server nodes are distributed via the local network, the SMB network. Now one choice can be to route the whole traffic through a switch embedded teaming switch where we have full RDMA capability, where we can have eight, up to eight identical ports in there. Another option would be to choose for a virtual switch for compute. So we have a set switch for the virtual machines and we have minimum two dedicated interfaces for storage traffic. This is what I would recommend for you. I would recommend to use a switch embedded teaming for the virtual machines and to dedicated NICs for the SMB traffic for the RDMA traffic between the nodes because when we are looking at the traditional deployment, we have seen this in the intro module about Azure Stack HCI, then you had in this three tier stack dedicated adapters for storage access. And I often have the question from customers that say, oh, when I do the software defined, is this stable? Is this good in performance? Yes, it is. If you use dedicated adapters, it is because the dedicated adapters will be minimum two times 10 gigabits. You can use 25 gigabits, 50 gigabits, 100 gigabits, 200, 400 gigabits port speed. If you use one big set switch, it can be very fast, but it depends on your configuration. If you have a misconfiguration here, then it will also have impact on your storage traffic here. Here, 
the misconfiguration can be maybe you don't plug in the cables or something like this. But you don't have this virtual layer where you have additional configuration complexity. This is my opinion. This is my recommendation. You see, the first option Microsoft provides is this one here. A third option is to provide two different set switches. If you prefer this, this is also possible. I will choose the second option. And now is the question for the compute switch. So which one should be the virtual switch for the virtual machines? And this here is the last one in the list. In my configuration, this should be the correct one because regarding the IP address, I can see this is accessible from the clients. In advanced, I can specify the name of the switch. Compute switch is the default value, but you can choose any name for the switch that has supported characters. So for example, VM switch, public switch. Here the default name is compute switch. It's Hyper-V port, it's recommended. We use switch embedded teaming. Um, it's the only supported configuration. And we use virtual machine queues. In typical scenarios, you wouldn't choose these values here. So let's go to next step. So the next step is about configuring the RDMA capabilities. So in your physical deployment of Azure Stack HCI, I would strongly recommend to you to use RDMA based on IWOB or Rocky. We discussed this in the module about hardware and networking requirements. In our virtual deployment here, we don't have the RDMA network interface cards. So here in this demo, I will not configure this in a physical deployment. This would be an important step. So now we have to define the networks. We have the names for the network adapters and the IP addresses and the subnet masks. This depends on your environment, what you will specify here. You can choose a naming to easily recognize the network interface cards. I will choose different networks. Let's do something like this here. For example, 192.168.101, and it's the first one. Let's take a dot one zero one and suitable subnet mask. Let's take the second one. This is also an SMB network. Um, what's important now, are they connected to the same switch? Will they see each other? Because the wizard will test if the server is pingable, if the server on the other side is reachable and if the network interfaces reach each other. So it depends on your configuration. So my network adapter number two and three will be the SMB networks, the storage networks. And I will also specify the IP address here for this second port. Now it depends on your configuration, if it's the same subnet or if it's a different subnet. Let's do it like this. This is for the first host, 111, 112. And for the second host, we will specify the IP addresses of here. I will copy this to save them some time. Oh, copy doesn't work here, so I will type it here, 192 dot one six eight dot one zero one dot one two one and here the one nine two dot one zero eight dot one zero one dot one two two and subnet mask and to mention it again, it depends on your specific scenario, how many network interface cards you have, uh, how you will configure it. I already mentioned this in the module about the networking requirements. If you really have 
RDMA traffic based on Rocky, we need the VLAN IDs here to configure them. So, but we already discussed this. Okay, in advanced, we can work with the Jumbo packet size if we have specific requirements. Usually you shouldn't change this to ensure that you don't have any package loss. If you change it, you have to ensure that your switch also uses this um, yeah, Jumbo packets and we can configure the encapsulation overhead in bytes. So also here, great apply and test. You can see I used the time to also provide the names for the networks here. So I changed Ethernet 1, 2, 3 to SMB1 and SMB2 and the VM network. And here we can see the tests are passed. The status of the tests is passed. For sure, now I can go next for clustering. Similar to Windows Server clusters, an Azure Stack HCI cluster needs a validation of the cluster. This is what actually is happening. So the cluster is validated. The wizard checks if our configuration is suitable for clustering. This was a pre-check or pre-validating. With click on validate, we have the full cluster validation um, steps where we can see here gathering data about nodes. This is the first step. Actually, we have finished 1% of this cluster validation. Then when the validation with that uh, got the data about the nodes, it will continue checking the disks, checking the configuration. When this is finished, we can have a look at the validation report. So now we can see we have a validation result. Inventory is successful in all 16 steps. System configuration is successful in all the 10 steps. And in the networking, I have a warning. I can check this. When I look at the cluster network configurations, validate cluster network configuration. There, there's a warning. And I should review this warning in downloading the report here and clicking on download report. I will receive the downloaded, the validation report. I can check the report. I can see inventory success, system configuration success. Let's check the networking. And in the networking, I have an information about the cluster network configuration. I can go through this and I can see um, that the, DHCP T status for the VM network differs from cluster network one. So here I switched from a DHCP configuration. I usually have in the environment to a static IP address. So I think this is fine. You should save this report to be able to check later if you are running into issues uh, and to see if your validation was successful or not. The next step is creating the cluster. It checks the DHCP availability, if the, we have the DHCP server available, or if we want to use a fixed static address, if we want to use a static address, the cluster name is D101 minus A Azure Stack HCI Azure Stack HCI cluster 01. This is my first cluster. I will use a dynamic IP address. This is fine for me for this demo purpose here. I can add the storage to the cluster. This is recommended and I will use all the networks in my environment. By create cluster, I will be able to build this cluster, Azure Stack HCI cluster 01. Let's create the cluster. See a new screen. Hang on, this got is going to take a few minutes. Configuring the cluster service on node D101, Azure Stack HCI01. We have the second node. 
verifying the cluster DNS name resolution this is the next step what happens here and again we see here the advantage of this wizard because we don't only have the configuration but we also have the validation here I need my credentials again this is not typical here so maybe I was running in some timeout if you had to look at the time in the screen you have seen I skipped a huge step here because I didn't want to have the full time for waiting of the network configuration in the wizard. So the cluster was successfully created. We are now ready to click next. This is perfect. And we have an information make sure to create a cluster witness once you finish this wizard. Our witness isn't created by this wizard. We can use a file share witness or we can use a cloud-based witness for the Azure Stack HCI configuration. We will see this later in a module when we talk about typical management tasks in Windows Admin Center. So let's go to next, the storage configuration. And here we have a button where we can erase all our drives. This is helpful if you are not sure if you have any data on these um, drives you will use for storage spaces direct. Here, these were new virtual machines with new drives, but when we already was, were testing something on these nodes, um, you have the advantage to erase the drives to remove any metadata on it. This means the drives that will be used for storage spaces direct. So next step, it checks the drives. I can see, okay, I have four drives in each server. I'm using the virtual machine, so the drives are unspecified. In a physical environment, you can see the size, the serial number, the firmware version, the location. So you get detailed information about this absolutely important part of the disk drives. Okay, let's go to next. In this step, the storage spaces direct validates the storage and important it's not Azure Stack HCI validates the storage it's storage spaces direct the technology behind Azure Stack HCI for the software defined storage so here we can see the result for the disks for the disk enclosures with detailed informations I can see disks listed for storage spaces direct are there file shares? Are there storage enclosures? Are there already storage pools? Are there storage tiers? Are there unpoolable disks? Are there virtual disks? This information is listed here. The volumes, the validated storage spaces direct support, verify node and disk configuration, unique device identifiers and unique enclosure identifiers and also this report can be downloaded for review. So, and you should download this report and review it carefully. If everything is successful and green, it's fine. You should store this for documentation. If you have warnings or errors, you should review them. You must fix errors on warnings. You should check if these are warnings you have to fix. So for example, misconfigurations in your disk um, in your disks or in the previous steps in the network warnings like for example pending reboots you could skip and do the reboot later so the next step is to enable storage spaces direct it's also possible to do this via PowerShell we want to enable storage spaces direct within this wizard because this is the final step to get storage spaces direct up and running to have an Azure Stack HCI configured solution. The next step, software defined networking, we will skip this one because software defined networking is optional. I already mentioned this. This is a dedicated own topic, the software defined networking, and we will not cover this in this demo configuration here. So the health providers are started for storage spaces direct and the disks are claimed in the pool. Our cluster performance history is created. We will see this in, the, in one of the next modules when we talk about the management tasks. 
In a final report, again, you should review this report, you should save this report to be able to refer to this later. Here I see a warning, I don't have any disks that can be used for cache, but I have a configuration where I don't plan with a cache and the rest here is fine of the configuration or in the configuration. Next is SDN and as I mentioned, we will skip this step. So we will click on, on skip and here we will see, that's it. We are all done here. Go to connection list. It might take a few minutes before the cluster to become reachable by name. We had a similar situation when we installed Windows Admin Center in the beginning of this module. So when we directly after the installation switched to the Windows Admin Center, maybe the services were not all up and running. And a similar situation could happen here with the cluster itself. So give the cluster a few minutes to finish the configuration and then you can click on the name of the cluster and the default page the overview page of this new Azure Stack HCI cluster will be loaded. You will see the dashboard view when it's finished. Here, this is the dashboard of this Azure Stack HCI cluster. And we have several configuration tasks to finish here, but we will cover them in the next modules when we register this cluster to Azure. Here you can see this cluster is actually not registered in Microsoft Azure. We will do this in the next step to register it in Azure, to configure and review Azure Arc. And also in one of the next modules, we will cover the typical configuration tasks here in Windows Admin Center. The final step in this configuration video of a two node Azure Stack HCI cluster is to configure a witness. We can find the witness configuration settings in the settings at the end of the tools list. So I will click on the settings. And in the settings, I have several settings we will cover in additional modules. One important setting is the witness. It's important in every cluster size. Many customers think you only need a witness in a two node cluster or in a four, six, eight node cluster, but also in clusters with three, five, seven nodes, we need a witness. The difference between the um, yeah, clusters with two, four, six nodes and the three, five, seven node cluster and so on is that um, in this two node cluster, the witness will receive a vote in the cluster immediately. In a three node cluster, for example, the witness will have no vote, but because of the dynamic quorum configuration in a cluster, the witness will receive a vote as soon as one node fails to ensure that we are again able to build a quorum in our cluster set. So there are two different witness types cloud witness, a file share witness. We will cover the cloud witness in the module about configuring or deploying a four node Azure Stack HCI cluster. So it doesn't depend on the number of nodes, which option you choose. It depends on your situation, on your environment, because um, the yeah, witness should be available, should be reachable, all the time, so there should be no interruption because if the witness fails, we cannot guarantee to survive another failure in the two node cluster. In the four node cluster, we have the situation if the witness fails, we cannot guarantee that more than two nodes can fail regarding the cluster service. We have learned in the module about Azure Stack HCI hardware requirements and basics that regarding the resiliency level, we can survive maximum two node failures at the same time. Um, so in the three node cluster, you have the situation if the uh, witness is not available, I can survive one node failure, but I have no guarantee that I will survive the next uh, node failure 
regarding the cluster service. It's always regarding the cluster service. So this means I will choose for a witness, I will choose the file share witness here. I have a local server with a local file server. It's a server here in my demo environment. It's the, sorry, the name is DC01. It's not the recommended way to use a, um, a domain controller like I do it here, but I have very small demo environments and they usually use the domain controller. The recommendation for the witness is to have a not high available, but um, yeah, um, reliable, good available target. You don't need any specific roles on there. You only need the file share you have access to. So let's save this here and then we can see witness settings are set and the witness resource is online now. So this cluster is now ready for the next configuration steps. The only thing we didn't configure here was the Azure registration, because there we have a dedicated module about registering Azure Stack HCI in Microsoft Azure and activation Azure Arc.